The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Hands On is brought to you by Sarah Sassal Football Club. Hello, football people. We're live on the NMF Network, uh, live.nmfnetwork.tv. Check us out. We're streaming live around the world, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, Jacob Lang, of course, and Coach Hans Smith here for Hands On. We got to thank, of course, Sarah Sassal Football Club. You guys are amazing. Thanks for uh, allowing us to do this show over and over again. Today, we're going to be talking a lot about college football, and we have the main, the head honcho of the UAAP here with us. Today, we're going to be talking to him in just a little while, but first, let's start things off the way we did last week yep. with uh, Football 101. So, um, last time we were talking about... God, we're getting old. What did we talk about last week? God, we're getting old. Players. Players, Players. substitutions and all of that, right? Yeah, yeah. So now um, <laughs> it's time for us to educate you guys on like uh, what, what gear you need, or what equipment you need in order for you to play the game of football. Now, these are like if you want to play at a high level, right? I mean, if you just want to play football, you can play with your organized. bare feet. Organized you can, yeah, football. there you go, organized football. Because you see it on the streets, you know, like... Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. But this is if you want to play organized football. All right. So, uh, Coach Hans, take it away. All right. Basic equipment, of course, number one would be the jersey, meaning the shirt or a t shirt. And it has to be with sleeves. Okay. Stress on the sleeves. All right. Uh, if you remember, some people will start asking about Cameroon, I think, was it? That mm. they played, I don't know if they played, not in, I don't know if it's the World Cup, they played sleeveless. Oh, but they sexy. That, that wasn't uh, allowed anymore after that because it didn't look uh, professional. Yeah, it didn't look professional. And also because, like, on the on the sides, on the sleeves, usually there will be patches yeah. on there. So, yes. this is like, uh, is this the Ascals jersey? Yes. It is. So, there it is. You get, you get a chance to look at, you know, what it looks like. There's usually the badge on the left side the heart area and also on the right side of your um, of your shorts, shorts that's where the logo will come out logo right? of the if we're talking about national sites that's the national logo right okay the pff in, like in the our PF, case philippine football federation uh if it's a school then it has to be that place right All right so there's a jersey and then there's the shorts as well now it depends where you're from, but it's called it's socks. Obviously, it, it, it matters what color of socks you're wearing as well. Um, you have to be uniform with your entire team, right? If everybody's wearing black, everybody's got to wear black. Yes. You can't be like an odd one out. Uh, you, it, it's called stockings in other stockings areas. Stockings because it's the British. British. That, uh, let's use that word. Right. Because even if for my players, if I say stockings to my players years back. They start wondering, stockings? Because <laughs> the Filipino knows only stockings that the women wear. Right. And uh, she males that love to wear stockings. But in fact, it's just socks. Yes. Now, it has to be knee length. Mm. It can't be tennis, short, uh, tennis socks or what have you. It has to be knee length. I think we're the only sport in the world that is uh, very strict with the uniform. Just like what Jing said earlier. If, for example, your uniforms is blue, blue, can be blue, blue, blue. Okay, now there's a new rule that we're very strict on with the AFC FIFA, very strict on with regarding the socks and or stockings. When people before used to tape their their or put other socks over their long socks, yeah, uh, with other colors, the tape and other colors. Now very strict. If your socks are blue and you tape your your below the shin, so to keep up your shin guards, which is the next uh, equipment that's needed. That has to be blue. Oh, same color. The tape has to be blue. It can't be the Mueller white tape. Oh, okay. The referees will have, tell you to take it out. Huh. Because that reason being that they're very strict also with socks is during a situation like the offsides. Right. If, uh, like if it's an evening game or whatever, the uniform, uh, meaning the jersey, the shorts, and the socks, can be clearly seen by the referee or the linesmen, the, the assistant referees. Before, in the past, it's very, very difficult. You really have to strain your eyes to see which player right, was. Right. Because there's sometimes they play 
two shades of blue, mm. very light blue and a dark blue playing together. That is not a problem. So, but now to make it easier for the officiating officials to see, they're very strict with that. I see. So the taping of your socks or your shin guards should be the same color as the color of your socks. All right. Okay. And speaking of shin guards, years past when I used to play, not that long time ago. Uh, shin guards was not a, uh, a must. Was it was a word? Not not a necessity. No, another word. You're you're better in English than really. Come on, man. Necessity is no, that doesn't uh, encapsulate requirement. That? <laughs> there it, it is. wasn't a requirement. Shin guards <laughs> wasn't a requirement. All right. Our secret guest. Just We're two Lhasa lights being taught by Natinian. I don't like that. <laughs> but thank you. Requirement. Yeah. Uh, years past. The reason why nobody knows this. No, a few know, a lot don't know. For the Filipino fan, that's why we have the Football 101. Right, right. It's for the Filipino fan who doesn't really know that much about the sport. The reason being, the shin guard is being a requirement. No shin guards, no play. No play. You guess? Because why? For safety reasons. Why? Because there's been broken nah. shins. No? Main reason is because of the AIDS. AIDS? AIDS scare, yes. What? Yes, the AIDS scare. Uh, because when you have no shin guards, <laughs> I you, see that one you get stepped on with the, with the, the studs, right? Yeah. And you tend to bleed because the socks are really of, of, of thin material. Right. So when you get kicked or during a tackle or what have you, uh, you can have a, you can have a, a wound. Mm -hmm. And when AIDS became a big thing already, yeah. I don't know what year, 80s was it? In the 80s? It started in the 80s. FIFA decided that shin guards is a requirement. It's a must. You cannot play without that any is shin guards. Super bizarre. And, and that is mainly because of the AIDS scare. And a little ignorant as well. I don't think you can transmit so AIDS you, like that. But. So now you learn something, no? That's why it's. <laughs> now, so when your parents ask you why you're buying shin guards for AIDS. The pops. shin guards, like the one that you see here, that is just one type of shin guards. Uh, actually, these are the shin guards of the past. Yeah, very few people use this now. I have a if pair like only that. Yeah. Some use, if they still use that. The shin guards now, you cut out. The ankle where protector. Where am I, where am I, where am I? The anklet, you cut that. This one right here. That's left, the shin guards <laughs> left. Yeah. Uh, before, you have a lot of that. Even deeper than that, to get the anklet that protects your ankle. But a lot of players, it's a, it's a hassle. Yeah, it, they complain that, you know, it's, it's difficult to control the ball. Yeah, it's heavier yeah, it's also. So now the shin guards are getting smaller and smaller, but <laughs> stronger and stronger. But yeah. here, it's made out of plastic. Could be hard rubber, plastic, or of any type yeah, they're thin material. Yeah, they're tiny now. No Super more straps, small. actually. No more straps. Yeah, they just fit it in into the socks, and then you know you it put It should that be tape. kept. Socks now, like the stockings that they are supposed to be. Right. It sticks to your to your to your skin, really, to your leg. Right, right. It doesn't just go down. Yeah. Like during my time, I had really to put garter on the up to keep my socks up. Okay. Even when you have shin guards under your socks, all right? Shin guards cannot be worn outside the socks. It has to be shin guards <laughs> first, and then you wear the socks. That's more of a fashion thing more than anything else. You're just going to look stupid. No, you look stupid. <laughs> you look stupid. Yeah. I uh, see some kids doing that. I get so pissed off. Anyway. Let's move on to the goalkeepers. Foot, no, the footwear. Oh, yeah, sorry. Footwear. Footwear, of course. Shoes. Uh, any color. Any color. doesn't matter. Uh, but it has to be, if they call it the British style, boots, football boots, they call it football boots, because yep. boots, another trivia, boots is because it is uh, above your ankle, not like the, the shoes that we have now. And they've kept it on and calling it boots. Ah, like football shoes. Did they used to have that? Like the yeah. protector at the... Yeah, it's, okay. it's above the ankle. That's why it started off. High tops. History, it is, yes, high tops. That's <laughs> nice. why it's called boots. Uh, if you want to say here now, like the others, they say football shoes. You know, I hope a lot of you guys, a lot of kids, even I am to, uh, I'm also a part of it. I used to call that spikes. Spikes, yeah. Everybody calls that spikes. Spikes. Now you tell me, why do you call it spikes? There's no spikes there. <laughs> okay? It's just football shoes. Yeah. I mean, it's a mistake. That every, I don't know where it started because I also started calling it spikes since elementary days. Yeah. Up to even college, I used to call it spikes. But there's no such thing as spikes. Is there it's clits. We call it clits. Clits. C L E A T S. Just to make that not, clear. Just to make it clear. Not yeah. the other clit that you know. Uh, other clits that you know. 
It's not personal. It's a sports show. It's a sports show. It's a sports show. I had other yeah. jokes in the in the. Never mind. <laughs> you can jump in. If brother sees this again, he's gonna. <laughs> hey, bro. Anyway, footwear. There, it's a dime a dozen now. Yeah. Everywhere, the there are players who who, who have types of shoes that only fit them that they're comfortable with. Right. Uh, of course, if you're like Ronaldo, Messi, and all that, they're endorsing this one, mm. so they only wear the Nike. So right, yeah. just, just like Kobe Bryant in basketball, he has what is he Adidas Nike. or Nike? Yeah. So that's what they do. Now, the shoes nowadays are super ultra light because when you play football, more of the the the, 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 the texture, the material of the shoe is just to protect your foot. Right. Okay, but actually. But like they say, you know, when you wear a glove, it, it fits like a second skin. So you have better control, you have better feel of the ball. Right. And there are different grooves, like, like now as you see here on screen, if you see a certain groove there, these are also scienti scientifically studied. So when you do kicks, spin balls, banana kicks and all that, these are the types that they, they do now. More traction yes. uh, on the ball. Uh, a lot of the kids nowadays, especially those who have money, don't know what they're buying because it's nice, it's expensive, that's what they want, but they don't know what it's for. Okay, parents, don't spend your money too much. Give them ordinary shoes. Yeah. When they get older and they know that it, it, it fits them, then that's the time. But with kids, please. I see some kids, you know, uh, uh, elementary kids with shoes that's worth 10,000. Oh. Remember, oh. parents, your kids grow. In a year or two, they grow, so you're going to spend another 10,000? By the time after a year, it's not gonna be ten thousand. Yeah, it's gonna be more. I have a so, question. Simple. Yeah, I have a question about the studs underneath. Um, mm -hmm. Are you allowed to wear metal studs? Okay. Has that been outlawed? Or All right. No, no, no. It hasn't been outlawed. Now, the thing here with the the, the studs, the clips, and everything, you, the ones that you see under the sole. Yeah. Okay. In the Philipp it depends on the weather. Aluminum studs usually are called the six studs. They're just six, two at the back. Okay, under your heel, mm -hmm. and four uh, on the uh, what do you call this? On the on the front part, soft, front part of your foot. Yeah. But these are used mainly for soft fields. Okay, like we, it's okay here in the Philippines. We we allow that, but only if it's the rainy season, for example. But if it's a dry and for turf, you don't need that. Okay. Okay, for turf you don't really need that. You just need multiple studded uh, okay. football shoes. So. That the two types are the, the multi studded or the six studs, or that's you would say the aluminum, the ones that make a lot of noise when you walk. Yeah, like you're like you're getting ready to play golf. Yeah, I remember <laughs> also when I was young, I love wearing six studs because when I walk on cement, people look at me. It feels good. I clap, 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 clap. But after a while, no, not only me, all the kids. <laughs> okay, those who can afford. But that's stupid because I get blisters like crazy. Right. On the field here, like in our country, tropical, yeah. it's not advisable to wear six studs. Okay, so okay, parents, kids, it is not advisable to wear six studs. Multi-studded. Multi -studded. And if you suck, you're not very good yet, stay away from the flashy yeah, um, footwear. Yeah. You know, the, the bright yellows and the bright pinks and all mm -hmm. of that. Reserve that for the people who got the skill, all right? Because you just look stupid, you know, and you fall over the ball and you got really nice shoes. Let's, let's avoid. Remember, it's not what you have, it's not what you, it's how you play. <laughs> okay, so with the shoes, it has evolved, it has evolved. I, I, I'd like to believe that maybe in the next five, ten years, the shoes, the football shoes would be like uh, what they use in, 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 in diving, scuba diving. Really? That I have a feeling it's going to be somewhere that way. Where it's just like part of the socks, right? It's just one, oh. one way. I have a feeling it's gonna be like this. Wow. Maybe not during my time. <laughs> but come back to this tape, 20 years from now, replay this, save it. Really? Archives, and you'll see I was correct. Really showing his age there with a tape it, you know, because there's no tapes. That doesn't exist. Okay. We don't have that anymore. <laughs> All right. Now. Uh, very quickly, let's go through like the home and away goalkeeper kits and the okay. infringement and sanctions and all of this. Let's just do it very quickly. In football, just like any other ball. Game. Yeah. There are two colors. There are always two colors to it. Like if it's La Salle, we have green and we have the white. Yeah. And then have the blue and the white. So things like this. It has to be. You cannot join organized football, uh, league, tournament, whatever, with only one set. Right. Okay? 
because there are two teams, of course, and the referee also has a uniform, which is entirely different from both teams. The goalkeeper will always be a different color. But for the lesser, less fortunate teams, let's say, that don't have that much budget, if, like, the team is playing, the field players, the 10 field players are playing with blue, and there's no other uh, set for the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper will can wear the white. But right nowadays, outlandish colors now, but it's attractive. Yeah. I don't mind pink, yeah. uh, all neon, yeah. you know. Uh, you see them everywhere, even locally. And it's, it's, it's nice, it's attractive. For me, I think football has the best uniforms. Yeah, I think also, like, sport. I think also like, the reason why they wear the bright colors is because I hear scientifically, your eye is attracted to it. So when you're yes. shooting the ball, it's more likely you shoot it towards the keeper. Yes. Then I don't. Ah, so the goalkeeper has to have always a different color from everybody. From everybody else, from okay. the other team, from his teammates, and from the match officials. Now, goalkeepers, years past, I would say more than a decade, were all wearing long sleeves. Yeah. It is not still out of style, but a lot of keepers now use short sleeves. E -K -K Question again: Who started this? Short sleeve goalkeeper. Casillas. Who? I, I went with Casillas already. Is that wrong? From Mexico. Oh, From Mexico. Our special guest knows that he's going to whisper it into my ear. <laughs> tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Yeah. Oh. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let me think about it for a second. Right? Um, cool. Let's starts with a C, starts with a C. It's, it's oh. Campos. Oh, my God. I picked that out from nowhere. You see, Mexico, Campos. World Cup goalkeeper, one of the best keepers in the world considered, but one of the shortest, if not the shortest. Wow. Oh. That's why you get short sleeve. Pwede. Short. Uh, sorry, don't call me. <laughs> Pero it was Campos of Mexico, who was the first player to play in front of the world, if you may say so, if I may say yeah. so, because of the World Cup. That was short sleeves. And when he started, so others started following. Ah. So, of course, kids will always follow their idols. Right, right. It's, why, you may ask? Because they're more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, Look maybe cool, with short sleeves, they can move faster. Yeah. Although I don't really understand why, because it's just material. It's it, long it might also be because if, like, if you practice more often in, like, in, in hotter weather, then you'd like to have yeah. your sleeves up, mm -hmm. so it's more comfortable. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So if you are not wearing the proper attire, you are not allowed to enter the field. Is that correct? Of course. Um, are there any other sanctions that, 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 that can be put in place if you're wearing okay. not the proper attire? If, for example, the only... It's going to be stupid if, the, if there's a player that comes in with a wrong jersey, wrong short yeah. hair. That's stupid. Whatever's more stupid is... I'm sorry, it's the word I know. Stupid mm -hmm. would be the fourth official and the referees. How did that player get into the field <laughs> in the first place? Okay? So, there is always... Before a match, there's always a player ID check. At the same time, that's also player's equipment check. Right. Officially, all organized football matches, there is always inspection of equipment. Yeah. And even during substitution, the fourth official will always check on the equipment of the player that's coming in. Mm. Obviously, he'll be in the right uniform, jersey shorts, and socks color. Mm -hmm. But guards. the things they check would be the Shades. chin guards and the kind type of studs he's using. Okay, because yeah. there are some tournaments uh, that's, that don't allow six aluminum stars. or six studs. Okay. Okay. Um, Sanctions would be cards, just a yellow card. There's no player that has been thrown out, red carded because of wrong uniform. Right. But, going to the next thing. If during a goal celebration, a player, of course, is so happy yeah. that they cut the jersey. That's, I love that's, it when that happens, you know? Like that's not, yeah, but that's a no-no, actually. <laughs> Especially if you don't have an undershirt. Yeah. Now, if you have an undershirt, but there's a political statement or... Religious. Religious or a personal statement or what have you, or advertising, all right? That uh, will, will come down to a yellow card. Yeah. Even after, after a celebration. But it doesn't happen all the time. Because if you notice... Uh, Shroki in, in, in one of the, I think the Suzuki Cup in Rizal. No, it couldn't have been a Suzuki Cup. It the, might have been a Peace Cup. Or maybe Peace Cup. Yeah. When he scored and he celebrated, the referees were AFC FIFA 
something every. He took off his shirt and all the women were just like, oh, took off his shirt. Oh my God. Maybe the referee also liked it. That's why he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> What was, like, I don't get to watch much women's football, but is it the same when they score goals? Do they take yes, off their shirts? Yes, they do. They okay, do. so, you know, yes. maybe we should watch more women's football. <laughs> okay. Go to Europe, man. That's a lot. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. Uh, regarding uniforms, okay? So, for all those aspiring coaches, players, young startup players, don't give your coach or your coaches a problem with regards to uniform. Please. It's... It, you know, I've had that experience one time, UAP, I think it was the juniors, finals, my top striker, stupid as he was, Hope you're watching came, to the game, <laughs> came to the game with only one set of uniform. Well, in fact, he knows damn well that, and not only me, but all the other coaches, when you go to a match, you bring both sets all the time. And this was a championship game. Oh. Okay. God. And I only used it in the last 20 minutes. Game was in Ateneo, he lives all the way in Mutinglupa, nobody at home, he has the household help, who didn't know how to commute, so they had to take a cab all the way from Mutinglupa, deep inside Mutinglupa, all oh, the way man. to Ateneo. What a mess. Oh, the uniform arrived, but I only used to about maybe 20, 16 minutes of the game. Most importantly, did you guys win the game? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, probably. I think I did. Okay. I think I did. Oh. I think I did. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Yeah, that's... But, a... uh, just, be, just remember, uniform... It's an integral part of football. No ifs, no buts. It's gotta be. Okay? And football shoes again. Kids, don't try to buy the more expensive ones because it's good. It's not the shoe that makes a player. It's not the uniform that makes a player, remember? Okay? You got no say with regards to uniforms. It's the coach or management who gives you the uniform. Whether you like it or not, you gotta wear it. Right. Okay? Again, it's not what you wear, it's how you play. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> All right. Football 101, another one done and dusted. Um, I think we're just gonna keep going. Go ahead. We're just gonna keep going, all right? Uh, next to me, to my left, uh, we have brought with us today the head honcho of the UAP football, the commissioner himself. Let's welcome to the show, Relly San Agustin. Hey. Oh, look at you, magically appearing on my uh, left side. For those who don't know, Atenista Yan. <laughs> but we last nights are nice people, so we invite all Atenistas. So adding Yan, a little so life to this you know, <laughs> conversation. Really, of course, uh, you can catch him um, on Sports 5. He, he, co he covers some of the games for the UFL. Uh, he's commissioner of the UAP, and if you guys don't know, uh, he's a, a goalkeeping extraordinaire as well. He was part of the, the national team uh, back in the 90s, right? Well, when was it again? Sorry. Late 90s. In Late 90s. 98, yeah. So he was, he was part of the national setup back then. So how are you doing, really? Um, uh, UAP football in full swing? I mean, I'm a, it's a first time for me to take on this uh, huge responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been, I've, been, I've been part of the UAP. I grew up you know, watching, playing, and then, of course, just hearing the news right. you know, on, on social media. But now to actually take care of the responsibility of, you know, the tournament, tournament management, you know, yeah. uh, assessing the referees, making sure they get it right. You know, you know being uh, appointed by the, the new host, which is FEU, you know, it's a big responsibility. You know, it's nerve wracking, you know, because I haven't been in, you know. It's fun, been, isn't it? No? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I make it a point. I make it a point every match day that, you know. I gotta strike a conversation with him just to find out, you know, just get, get me through it, get to know what's happening. So when I sit down on that bench and I watch all the games, you know, wow. I know what's happening. You've been watching all the games. He's pretty got much to. all the games. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. How's it been then? I mean, um, <clears throat> I know you guys have been exposed to um, UAAP football and college football. Me, on the other hand, there was really nowhere for me to watch it. You know, I didn't go out to the venues and watch the games. And you couldn't catch it live on TV. It's the first time this year that it's ever happened. And I'm like, wow, these kids are good, you know? Like, I'm watching the games on TV, and I'm like, damn, these guys are like, you know, promising individuals that you know are going to make an impact in and the And it's UFL getting better and better every year. Better. Yeah. But I, I, I'd like to correct you on the televised, uh, you know, UAP games. But back in 96, oh. where, of course, uh, we played against Coach Hans's team, right? Thank you for giving me that championship. Oh. Oh, I got it back the next year anyway. I got it back. <laughs> Which I would have said I should, I should have quit while I was ahead. <laughs> yeah, but that was the first time they actually televised uh, UAP football, they televised the finals. Oh. And I remember the commentators, it was Waki Trillo yeah. and Jim, was it Jimmy Javier? Ah, the first one. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was funny because 
you know, these uh, Jimmy Javier and 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 Wacky Trillo, of course, they cover UAP basketball. Right. right. So there are a lot of things, a lot of lingos that they were like, you know, mistakenly yeah. called. Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy. Was not, especially Wacky. So, but you know, but you like the banter, you know, they're joking around. Mm. And of course, the following year, it was Wacky again, and this time with, with the late Chris Moss for the time. So I think from there, it pretty much paved the way for raising the interest of uh, the UAAP. Right. I mean, I guess uh, throughout the years, there was no televised games or maybe just finals as well. Uh, the only one I remember is sorry to the other UAP universities, but it's not my fault. <laughs> if it is a uh, finals of La Salle Ateneo, Ateneo La Salle Finals, UAP football, that's televised. And it makes sense too. I mean, we were talking about the 90s, right? Yeah. We're talking about the 90s. Now, now, now we're, we're, we're getting more coverage, but I still would still ask the networks to please cover also the girls, the man, not just always yeah. uh, the men, uh, the boys, the college boys, okay? But yeah, uh, in the 90s, like Greli was talking about, if I remember, if my memory serves me right, okay, it was only La Salle Ateneo that was televised. That's right, because um, I think it happened in 96 and 97, because we played you back to back, yeah. right? And then even in 98, yes. um, this was in Ultra at the time, yes. um, where I guess you beat us again. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were up, we up 1-0 at the time, half. Yeah. first half, and then you guys scored like five straight goals. What? No, no, just three what? in 11 three? minutes, and then, and then we just <laughs> let it go, the last two goals, you know. We didn't want to... I could step out. Yeah, you know, it's not about beating up. <laughs> I could step out of here, guys. You can continue the trash talking. <laughs> no, you know what? Wait, let me tell you. Huh? Uh, not to take away anything from Relish guesting here, but the La Salle Ateneo feud. Let me tell you, folks. It was in football only. We're in La Salle Ateneo. Yeah, on the field we're killing each other, but it was we saw football that kept the football. Uh, 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 I mean, there was no real feud even after. Like I said at earlier shows, mm -hmm. you know, we'll be killing each other. Ready, we'll be screaming at my players. My players will be screaming at him. They're making moral, hot cursing, and all that. But guess what? At 10 p.m., they're in one club, Konya, drinking beer, Konya, <laughs> joking, you know, whatever. Passing, uh, uh, never mind, uh, passing drinks and all that. But, you know, it is in football, in football. Which I like to say, I'd like to say that I think basketball now, you see the respect now both schools. But not talaga, pero you can see already the sportsmanship. Not like way, way back. Talagang upakan. But I'd like, to, I'd like to believe that it was because of football, La Salle Ateneo football. <laughs> Be between, that's Chris and I, because what's funny is, even in high school games, between La Salle and Ateneo, we just let the kids play, and Chris and I are talking in the middle of the field about mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if, if anybody makes noise from Ateneo, if the game's in Ateneo, Chris will shut them up. And same thing with me. Yeah. If the game's in La Salle Sobel, for example, and I see students trying to make noise because it's our territory, simply, patapangan yung mapata eh, pag territory nila, I shut them up. So, and, 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 and the first selection of La Salle Ateneo is what's in football. Yes. Selections. Uh, Coke for, coke for goal, Palaro Pambansa, national finals. Correct. It, was, it will always be an Ateneo, high school, mm -hmm. La Salle Zobel, you know, tandem, right? So, you know, that was always there. And, my God, I mean, combining those two teams together, especially in high yeah. school, right. solid. Solid, solid, solid NCR team. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And you won't believe that so many friendships, one of my closest compares are Ateneans. Mm -hmm. You know, when, but when, we were talking about it now, Saturday, but if we're talking with other people and they say, he's starting his and just say, shut up, Konyo. He's my friend. I don't fucking care where he came from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it stemmed from football, competition. Okay? Ateneo greats. I mean, I consider them greats. George Felix, Noel Santos, uh, some other guys, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And then the club, we, had, we set up a club, Real Ventud, Royal Youth, mm -hmm. Italian. That's mainly made of La Salle Ateneo players. Oh, cool. Barkadaan lang yan. That was the first division team kami. Okay? And, and we lasted for quite a number of years. And our, from our, uh, in our logo, we have a, we have a abbreviation, F-T-L-O-F. For that? the love of football. Oh. Which we, which uh, our players up to now still believe in that because you see in Facebook. Sometimes, oh, it came out again. I never, I never remember the F-T-L-O-F. I think you were part of that before, the, the youth team. 
I, th I think so. I think I, you are, no? In the youth, because we had relevant to youth also. Oh. And that's, that's way before my time. <laughs> Maxi, Maxi of Bud's time. Uh, Maxi, you know, these guys were the, the, uh, the relevant to youth. But still, La Salle Ateneo. From UP, yeah, but from UP, where do they come from? La Salle Ateneo also. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's football, it's football. Okay, getting back to you. <laughs> yeah. Ateneo and La Salle, obviously, they're going to be facing each other soon as well in the UAP. Mm. That's right. Um, both of them not doing so well uh, in the first yeah. couple of games. Yeah. Um, how, does that, how does the format work for the UAP anyways? Uh, is it like a double round robin? It's going to be a double round robin, and then there's going to be a, a semi-final round uh -huh. uh, with, with the top two being twice to beat. Okay. And then we come finals, you have a best of three. Ooh. So it's like a pattern after UAP yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah. So it's long, it's tiring, but yeah. I think they've done it last season and uh, it's pretty much work. I mean, we're making the moves right now to actually shorten the season, mm -hmm. go back to the original format of top two, um, qualify for the finals. Okay. But uh, I guess pretty much too late in the, the whole UAP scenario. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to wait till next year to actually implement that format. Okay. Which was brought about by... By who, really? Who brought it? Who suggested this recommendation of doing the football the right way? Anyway. <laughs> there are only two types of way of competition. Let me guess. <laughs> I'm going to guess. <laughs> no, it's you one. No, because... Uh, when I, I remember, if I remember right, the first meeting that we had, coaches meeting for the UAP football, first thing that Mark Molina, who is the athletic director of FEU, uh, stated that the UAP board has decided that the way of competition for UAP football is not the right way. So I just shouted, hallelujah. I've been trying to <laughs> tell the, this for over a decade. Mm -hmm. So we all agreed on the way it's, there's only two types of folks in football, organized football. When I'm talking about festivals, seven sides, I'm talking about organized 11 side football. Two types only. One league type and one cup type, which the UFL is following. Yeah. Cup is more of a elimination type. You have groups, just placing around. Next rounds, you just kill each other until the best two teams yeah. end up. Okay. Oh, by the way, Congrats to Loyola. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about that in a little while. Sparks for big champions. And Pachanga, great game. You Ooh. made a, you made believers of non-believers. And, of course, congratulations to the Green Archers United, our first uh, silverware, even if second, <laughs> but it's still our first. Considered the smallest team, but the, one of the quickest anyway. And, to of course, to Air Force, like what Bob Guerrero loved to call the Cinderella run. Right. Bob, not Cinderella. Air Force, still Air Force. If Air Force started really from second division, then that's a Cinderella run. Congrats to the Air UFL, Force. too. Yeah. UFL. I think <laughs> so far the best finals yeah. in the UFL ever. They did a Very good exciting. job, right? Very, Very exciting <laughs> night game. It wasn't a lopsided game, you yeah. know. Both teams were running scared, and it was nice to see. Very nice, to see. very good to see. Okay, now going back to the UAP. The rule of the UAP has to have also finals. So in the league type, League, you don't have finals. Eh? Yeah. If you the best points. points, or for those who don't know, best points or most wins. Okay, even with draws, points. Football, a win is three points, draw one point, you lose zero points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, league, you go with the points. That's why goal difference is a very important thing, also. Same like in the UAP, I think. Uh, I don't want to go on explaining, he's, he's the one supposed to win. <laughs> <laughs> Goal difference is uh, uh, counts a lot. If two teams or more are tied in points, let's say there's total number of let's say 21 points. Let's just say two teams have 21 yep. points. Who will you ask? Who is going to be the number one? Number two? You go to the goal difference. Meaning goal difference is uh, team scores let's say 12 goals in the entirety of the two rounds and Concedes. scored that conceded three. So they have a plus eight. Oh, I don't know about that. 12 minus 3. 12? What did I say? 12? 9. 9. Sorry. Sorry. I used to smoke in the field. So this is where I really come in. Hey, hey, hey. My show. Okay. The next team, the next team, the other team that's tied in points, let's say, uh, they scored also 12 goals. Okay? They scored a total of 12 goals. But they conceded only 2. So they're plus 10 against plus 9. 
So the team that has a plus 10, that's the goal difference. Goals for, goals against, you, div- you, you subtract. Yeah. Then, of course, the higher number of goals, goal difference, is the number one. If you guys are fans of the UFL, that happened just two years ago. Uh, global winning on goal difference yeah. against Kaya to win the title. If you're an EPL fan, then Manchester City did that to Manchester United exactly. uh, just a, a few years back as well. So it's very important, goal difference. Yes, goal difference. And then if it's still a draw, take it away, Rel. So if it's still a draw, yeah. okay, you have the goals for, you have the goals against. Yes. And first, take into consideration goals for. Yeah. So for example, if they're all like 9-9, nine, nine, but uh, let's say the first team is uh, 12 goals for, three goals uh, against. against, but the other team is, come on, help me with the math here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 18 <laughs> goals for, yeah. nine goals against, you know, we take into consideration 18 as, com- as compared to 14. Is that because of like entertainment value? You scored more goals or no, no, what no, is no. that? No? It's simple, simple logic. Because this team scored more. Okay. That is only after what I explained. After goal difference. Yes. Yeah. Goal after difference. points, after, after goal difference. After there's still a draw, that's where you... Mm-mm. And then goals for... And then what if it's still the same after goals for... Then we take it to goals against. Right? The goals against. The least no, number the least of goals scored against. Goals. Yeah. If, it, if it happens that that's the same as well, what, what, what do we do? Like yellow we cards and red cards? No, 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 no. Whoever scored between. That, that's already... Who won the... Let's say team A, team B. Who won in that game? Right. But if it's a draw. Because I know it's like that. Like um, in certain settings where if it's really a, a, um, like a surprise situation where everything is the same yes. and eventually they'll take into account like red cards and yellow cards and if you still can't get a, um, separated after that, it's just going to be a coin toss. It has happened. Really? I remember, I yes. think I was in high school and elementary. Philippine Air Force against San Miguel. It end, the games were played in Ugarte Field. Ugarte Field is the garden now between Ayala, the one the side of Ayala and... The Ayala Triangle? Near the Ayala Triangle. Or the Ayala Triangle. Is it now, that's right. Oh, that used yeah. to be like a place to play? That's a field, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. It was uh, Ugarte, mm-hmm. uh, I think, listed to the PFF or to the NCRFA cool. for a number of years. I also played there. There were bleachers, wooden bleachers that's and all cool, that. Man. Uh It was a toss coin between Air Force and and San Miguel. <laughs> I don't remember anyone who won it. Identical and all. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Even in the game. Coleta. I think it, it came out, it came about because there were no lights in that uh, field. So I think the game kept on dragging and they couldn't do any more the penalty shootout because there were no more lights. I think it was getting too dark. So decision was toss coin. How horrible. How, what a horrible way to well, play the game, right? If, if I was the one who lost because of toss coin, I'm not going to feel bad. If people don't understand the football, right? I mean, personally, I don't. I won't feel bad. I'd feel it depends, all right. But I think now, now you can't do that anymore because that has to be replayed. Because a new ruling now in the FIFA, ah. which is also a topic that we should take up also in the UP, in the UP, in the UAP, where in the UAP there's some rules in the UAP that doesn't sit well with the football coaches or the football loving people because uh, that's not the way football's done. Uh, now the rule is. If a game was stopped at a certain number minute, regardless of the score, first half, second half, regardless of the score, you continue with the game where the uh, on a, like, another day, okay, stoppage, huh? stoppage uh, due to force majeure. Yeah. Uh, let's say 56 minute, the game was stopped. You are supposed to play it uh, on another day, but you start on the 56. Right. So everything stands. Okay. Yellow cards, red cards. Yeah. Score. Okay. Okay, so Pick that's up the way it is. Left off. Yes. Right. Uh, if it is because of the weather, if you remember, then I think Richie mentioned this. The, I was a match come there. Uh, I think, was it the Peace Cup or the Suzuki Cup? Peace Cup, I think, in Rizal. The ruling now is before when the lights went off, the field was flooded. Challenge and all that. Cup qualifiers. Challenge Cup. Okay, the ruling now is, which we can do also in the UAP because we don't have any field that is. With lights, but if it's force majeure because of the rains, floods, and all that, you stop first for 30 minutes. You wait for 30 minutes. Yeah, but doesn't necessarily mean at the end of 30 minutes you wait for the next step. If in 15, 20, 10 minutes everything's okay, referee's decision, you can play with, of course, the approval of the match com. Okay. If after the first 30 minutes it is still not playable, 
you wait another 30 minutes. Okay? Then, same again. You don't have to wait for the hour to go through, to finish, but you can do it in 40th minute, 45th minute. If it's okay, then you go and play. So, if after the second 30 minute, after the hour, still unplayable, then the match come and the referee will decide uh, game stop, mm -hmm. resume another day. Okay. How do, does this... Is this what the rule that the UAP no. is using right no. now? So the, the rule in the UAP right now is if, if it's abandoned yeah. or it's stopped due to, let's say, the weather and everything, yeah. the game has to be replayed again. Oh, Sorry, so if you're up 0 -0. like if you're up 3-0 yeah. or whatever, exactly. then you gotta do it again. All the yellow cards are erased. Oh. But if you are sent off, yeah. that stays. <laughs> that's funny. I find that so funny because Kawawa is team. Because I think last year or the other year, I think it happened. Uh, in the UAP, where there was a replay, I think it was also the women. I think it's the women again. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't remember what what uh, the two teams involved were. But in the first game, one team was ahead. Okay. okay? Stoppage, replay. The other team won. <laughs> because, of course, it's usually the. The underdog or the team is losing. Who has sees more? Oh, I can make adjustments. Right, right, That's right. We play. Wala na yung score. Oh, wala na. Lamang sila dati one zero. Ngayon we're gonna play them again zero zero. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sila may red card. Tayo wala. Okay. So, nag adjust yung the team that was losing the first game, the original schedule, adjusted. The other team lost. What can you do? Complain. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, but what can you do? UAP board is the one who decide on that. Is that a rule that's being So it's a rule into? right now that, that we cannot change. So that's what Coach Hans is saying, that yeah. you know, the certain rules at FIFA, that this is, needs to happen, that whole 30 minute thing. Mm -hmm. And I think this has been applied in the UFL. Yeah. I've experienced a few sure. games, it rains, we sure. have 30 minutes, you know, yeah. I hate it, right? Yeah. 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 I want to get home on <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> my wife's going to kill me. Right, right, you know, right. I'm having to wait 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and having yeah. to play. But here is that, you know, if it's abandoned, um, I would say, given that the field, like in FU right now, the lights are not there yet. Yeah. So we can't do anything. We can't do the 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're still there, but we can't. Yeah. So we have to replay the game. And then another thing is, I think usually you'd want to play the game right away. Right. 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 Just to you know to be able to you know consistency. If this one player was was carded and is out suspended, you know you play right. there without that person. Uh -huh. but, you know, again, there's no rule, so the UAP can say, oh, let's just play it at the end of the other games of the first round. Mm. So it means to say that this player who got carded and sent off cannot play in the next game. Right, right. In the last game. So what's, is, that, is that something that you guys are looking to Yeah, we. Yeah, to I think what, what needs to happen, um, especially for the, for the next season, because right now we're just going to play it out. Yeah. Play it out, observe a lot of things. I mean, as a first-time commissioner, that's, that's my responsibility. I'm just going to observe you know, listen to coaches, uh, players, and everything. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, having played in the league, you know, I want to be able to satisfy both parties. Yes, you know, yes. The, the, technical the technical side and, of course, the players and the coaches side. Um, at the end of the season, we will uh, convene to actually change the rule already as early as possible. Awesome. Like, apply whatever the FIFA rules are um, to be able to make the tournament, as we call, you know, more professionalized before the annual UAB board meeting. Yes, because they follow certain dates mm -hmm. on change rules, rules, rule change, and all that. So we need to do that quick before the end of the season. Mm -hmm. I think everybody involved in the UAB football will 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 convene mm -hmm. and see about. We've done this before, but I don't know. Only a few changes, but not all changes that we wanted. But I think it's about time that the UAB wakes up and and. Just follow what FIFA is all about. Right. Let's follow FIFA. I, because I don't. F okay, I'll agree only to one. To having the finals. Mm -hmm. I also suggested that if we're going to play the finals, might as well let number three and four play, because there's a general championship in points for the universities involved in UAP. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're going to have one and two play in the finals. Let's play three and four, one match. No, no, twice to be known. Three and four for ranking purposes and points. Five and six, play. Number seven, sorry, So you're the you're the the, 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 the team there, the, the bottom. So, para extra games, para That that could be maybe hopefully they, they can do that. 
So, because that's what uh, in the first meeting, if you remember, really yes. everybody wanted more games. Sure. So we want ranking, so we were able to, you know, put some points to it. Yeah. Because again, there's a general tally, right, of of, mm. of who gets to be an overall champion yes. in the end. Right? Yes. So, mayro mas maganda rin. And I think the coaches and the players would want that also. It's another game. You know, everybody now on the players, they just want to have to play more games. Right. Mm -hmm. So that you know, just let's get it over. UAP is a short tournament. We need really more games. Okay, I'm still pushing for the other universities to put more, more teams like uh, Adamson, hopefully, or uh, and uh, what's the other? No, tama eight lang. Adamson. Adamson, Adamson lang, lang yung kulang. I mean, Adamson who, who was part of it before, but yeah, off, but but yeah, they can't feel the team. Well, <laughs> I guess they just got creamed. They got oh. in time. <laughs> Remember, I was telling that 43, 40, no, 43, 42, and the one that was. What do you mean 43-42? First round at La Salle beat them 42. Oh. Ateneo beat them 41. Mo basketball first half. Huh? Yes. Next round. <laughs> next round Ateneo played them first before La Salle because of the placing to the yeah. rankings. They scored 42. Mm. So I told my boys, hey, cannot be Ateneo be, or score more than us. So we scored 43. <laughs> so you know these things. It's a it's a it's a friendly anyway. But not to be fun of Adamson, but it's good to have Adamson coming in, and I was forcing Junel Bakuli, the athletic head of NU, to put up a football team. Uh, I told him he wants to put up a women's team and even a juniors, and he was saying, hinay hinay lang, dan dan. Pero for him to put up after a year, or less than a year after I asked him to put up a, a, a football team, which he did with the men, hopefully maybe in the next few, two years, three years, he'll have a women. Right. And the same to the juniors team also. So mm. it has to be that way. I mean, development. It is more fun for the UAP. Of course, and I think this is something that, that Adamson can actually um, start as well. Yeah. Start it up again. Yeah. I mean, they could lose all their games, but again, it's yes. all about development and being yes. being there. And then, you know, you, eventually you'll find the right coaches to scout the right players. Right. Yeah. 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 They should know all about that. I mean, yeah. yes. they had yeah. some trouble in the basketball um, tournament as well before, yeah. and now they're, they're, they're competing now. So that's. They should know all about that. That field, by the way, I've seen like a few games. Mm -hmm. That looks incredible. That field looks... It's, it's really nice. It's oh, nice. And, wow. You know, you know, just seeing that, you, know, you, you get a lot of comments from social media like, wow, oh, that field is so nice. Yeah. Like pictures. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's still a work in progress. You know, you need a lot of... Uh, you're going to put up more, more bleachers you know, just for, you know, for, the, for the student population yeah. to actually watch the games because there are only certain areas. Eh? Right, right, right. You know, and... Um, you know, it's headed in the right direction, and you know, at, at, at the start, when of course when you had the coaches meeting, there there were some um, concerns concerns about playing artificial field, yeah. right? Because you know some some football fields in their schools are all are grass, so sure. they're not able to adjust. But you know, you know, just right now they're just enjoying it, and yeah. you know they're playing their game. There's no difference. I mean, where it's else just an adjustment? It's yeah. just difficult. I mean, where else are you going to play on a pitch that that perfect? Right. You know what I mean? It's and it, it, it's nice to see as well, it's, it's well in regulation size, you know, <laughs> because we get to watch the games in the UFL and the Emperor Stadium, it's a little small. There you really see like, wow, this is it. Like when you're pinging 40 yard passes, it's like, damn, that, that looks really Sayang ang ginasus ng mega world dun sa Emperor That's what I'm saying always. Mm. You guys should have uh, talked to a lot of football just people little, first. Just a little. Konti, konti lang, okay na sana. Just a little. <laughs> anyway, yung, uh, you just be ready because uh, LaSalle staff also they asked if I wanted, I'm going to have two fields in LaSalle Canlubang. DLSU, DLS Canlubang was, is now DLSU, which will be transferring there, the whole university. What? Really? In a few years time, yes, because it's the biggest, uh, I don't know how many acres of land we have. I've been there though, it's huge, it's yeah. gin ginormous. Uh, I was really asked if, if I'm going to be getting two fields, both standard sizes. Uh, I wanted to be in part of plans for the locker rooms and all that and bleachers and all that. Once that happens, UAP teams, I'm taking the... <laughs> Mark, Molina, Anton, Montinola, I'm taking over. <laughs> the whole thing. Once I have my... Once I have the fields... In, 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 uh, hey! Straight, a flex. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that was, uh, that's what I was going to say, you know. It's quite a drive getting to FD. But of course, you know, got used to it, yeah. you know, and leave at a certain time. But wow, moving yeah. to Canluba. Hey, no problem. I'll get my helicopter soon. <laughs> no, but it's, yeah. It, and all honestly, 
Because people have been asking also Lasal, hmm. how come Coach Hans, you're the one there always involved with football, you never host? I said, we're like with the games. Ateneo has how many fields? They can host it. Yeah. If you hosted it, now they have that field, they're doing pretty, pretty well with the scheduling so far and all yeah. that. So it's done. But me, I don't want to do it. Well, I do it in Rizal. Yeah. And Rizal's not that okay. So beach, beach soccer. If yeah. I have my own fields, you know, if Lasal has their own fields and two part at a time, at the same time, Perfect. then exactly, pwede, pwede na yan. You can play the men, women, the same, simultaneous, or whatever, and then juniors on another day, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the way it's going to happen. Now, regarding the schedule, there have been tweets, uh, questions about the venue change. If I remember right, the second coaches meeting we had really was uh, FU said that we would have some games in, in Ateneo for the sec yes. second round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the schedules that have been emailed to the, to the universities, it's again still all in FEU. So what happened there? I think and I hope we still have the time to make to move some games to Ateneo. Because uh, you know what's really tiring? Not just for me, huh? I'm not even playing. But the players, especially those who come from so far away, they get tired. The travel alone. The travel alone. How long does it take, like from Montelupa, where you live, to FEU? If I drive, what, because what I do now is from, from Las Piñas, I go to La Salta, I, I take the bus together with the team. Okay. Because I'm not going to drive all the way, I'm not even using my motorcycle, oh. no way. Okay, we'll say from Taft then to FEU. From Taft, about an hour already. And we're passing like the shortest cut. Alright, it's okay. Through España. Right. But if, you, if I you drive and my players will come from all the way from the south, that's going to take almost two hours, maybe even more. Right, right. Especially, what we should understand is, the televised games on Fridays, the game will finish at 5, let's say, no? More or less, 5 p.m. Oh, shit. They need to relax yes. a bit like that. You know what time uh, our first televised game when we played, LaSalle played uh, UP? Saw that game, by the way. Well it done. took us two hours and 17 minutes. Exactly, I timed it. When we left FU Fern to go, I know, you know why? Because I had to take a pee so bad, <laughs> I really wanted to get down from the bus and just take a freaking pee right on España. <laughs> so when we turned, there was a gas station, beautiful gas station. No CR, I just went to the freaking corner and took my pee. And they had to wait ah, for a long so time for me because it was really long. I mean, no. Long play. Yeah. By the time I got to my car in La Salle, when I, I was really tired. By the time I got home, I couldn't anymore go out and enjoy my social life. Oh. I'm not saying it's that bad, but it's really far. <laughs> poor, you should admit, thing. Mark, it's poor really thing. far. Uh, but I, I think uh, looking at the second round schedule, there will be games played mm. in, in Ateneo. So I think it's more of the focus on the men's and women's. So it's going to alternate. So there's a new field also in Ateneo? No, it's the, it's the same field. Same field, okay. but the same field. Properly now, properly uh, rehabilitated, manicured and all that. Yeah. Because last year, like I told Ricky Palu last year and, and M. Fernandez, I said, no way will this be ready for the UAP last year. Yeah. Mm. It was beautiful, but one game, tapos na, sirana. Because I know, because it happened to my field also in Sobel, beautiful. Big lang may Inter Lasal. And we're talking about, I don't know if it's a high school or elementary, I forgot. It's a lot Man, of games. Wasak. Wasak. It's nice wasak. to see though, like so many nice pitches coming up and there's a lot of plans for more yes. venues that are coming out as well. Like, like what I said, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, FU um, just only has one field. Yeah. That's why I think we, we, we did agree in the coaches meeting that we will be sharing some games with Ateneo. Right. Yeah. right. So it's going to be, I think the only challenge there, I mean, I think in the case of, let's say with Coach Hans, who coaches three teams. Right? Uh -huh. So, how do we balance it? Oh, right. <laughs> Kailangan ni balance yan, eh. Uh -huh. So, let's say, for example, if he has a junior's game, he makes sure he plays at 10 till 12. So, he has time to travel for his 1 o'clock game. Uh -huh. And then play on a 3. Don't make me travel, Claudio. Shit, it's one venue. So, like, you know, obviously, you get a lot of interaction with coaches. Yes. Um, and, you know, um, even other members of their community, of the schools and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, you having a hard time? I mean, it's your first year? You no, no, it's, it's, it's uh, of course, feeling my way. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I like to ask a lot of questions right. and ask the right questions, you know, to be able to be, you know, to know the craft more. You know, I, I surround myself with, of course, people that have been there, right. you know. I, I, when, when, I, when I was appointed, I, I didn't really think that, like, yeah, I'm going to bring in my team. No, yeah. I can't, can't do that. 
Yeah. Right? So it's, we stick with the same team, find out how they work, work together, and then make the changes in the next season. You haven't had any issues with like having to reprimand coaches for like oh. outwardly, uh, you know, outwards. No problem. So you even bite the mat, bite the mat. You know, like hindi mo control yung emotions. You know, meron pa yung ganon. This is the thing about this is the nice thing about being a commissioner. Yeah, you're just quiet. Ah, you're just sitting there and you observing. Cannot, yeah, you, don't you cannot. Oh, you don't get I involved. I cannot stand up and say, right. "Hey, coach." It's not your responsibility. It's not your duty. None of that. It's not. No. Okay, Gian, no. where, where's Gian? Can we can we get the photos up of uh, of UAP <laughs> and Coach Hans? Let's start off with a nice photo. Let's start off with uh, you know the. the Is angel. this the one of courtesy of Bob Guerrero? <laughs> we're gonna start. <laughs> Thanks, off with, Bob. We're gonna start off with the angel photo of. Uh, oh, look at you! So sweet. Wow, hey. So sweet. You know, coming to the game. Oh, let's play some football, guys. Look at me. Yeah, and then, and then when shit goes wrong, when when things aren't going his way, you know, Coach Hands morphs into somebody else. And it, you know, God forbid there are items around him, which we're gonna see in the next photo. Oh, come on now, come on now. That, that chair did nothing to you, Coach Hands. <laughs> no, no, because it's my EPC. Sabi niya alvin ako po may EPC. So you don't get involved. You don't get involved. You just no, no, observe. Sit down, like, observe. observe you know. Write think, it down. Yeah. Coach so I think hands. even in the, the my first match, uh, you know, to observe and you know, to, you know, to be there as the commissioner, <laughs> you know, I got Coach Hans already slamming that table, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, just to wake them up. <laughs> but again, you know, I think La Salle football will not. You know, that's what Lasal football is. You know, if Coach Hans is there, ranting, you know, screaming at his players, that's Lasal football, eh? right? You know? And I enjoy it. You know, and now as a, you know, it's observing the game, you enjoy it. I think even when we're playing, we used to enjoy. It. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we used to enjoy that. Yeah. Him screaming at his players because you know we're getting one over them. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. Just let him be. You know, it's true. You know, like when we played them um, in high school, and Coach Hans wasn't on the bench, mm -hmm. and we played well, we drew them. I, I'd scored a goal. When I look over, Coach Hans isn't there. It's like, damn it, man! Why can't you just make it perfect? You know, score a goal, make sure that Coach Hans sees it, so that you can like rub it in a little bit to, your, to the people that you know on the other side. But. Well, I, well, I'm much harder you on it. You think that's gonna affect me? Not you. I just want the players, you know. I just, I just want them to feel it, and for my personal memory, that like Coach Hans was there. He saw me let's, score. Let's, let's stop talking about me. <laughs> let's, let's again. I, I've always wanted to know, and a lot of people know, want to know this also, then, because it's been for ages that Ateneo's hosted the UAP football, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. What happened now? Uh, did Ateneo beg off, or did if you really want to get it, or what? If you, from what you know. Um, from what I know is that uh, when I spoke with, with Mark Molina on this one is that I think they, they were really determined to, to be the host that they wanted to get the host because the fact that they were able to build right. okay. an artificial turf you know mm -hmm. the artificial turf I mean the, the, the field in FEU was really supposedly just for training purposes right but I think when, how it panned out you know it's huge international yeah. nice you know Anton you know being the sports enthusiast that he is you know, it's like, you know, maybe we can host. We can play games here. So that's why they they um, they uh, suggested to the board that maybe FU could be host for this year. And right. they just gladly gave it up, or did they fight for it also? Uh, they, they, I don't think they. Is it a it's a bidding, right? But I'm bidding. Yeah, bidding. So I guess I guess for the so many years that Ateneo has been the host. Pass on to somebody else. Pass you know? on to someone else just to see. Right. I guess that's how it is, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're the hosts always rotate. Well, I think actually, no, it's not always. Eh? No, actually not. Eh. Uh, when I got into the LSU, I didn't know all this ongoing new UAP. Mm. I thought if the, let's say if, if La Salle is hosting the UAP, La Salle hosts everything. Oh. Yung pala, yung pala, ang general host will obviously host the basketball. Mm. And then another sport for that. Pero sometimes there were some, La Salle was hosting also uh, I think track and field also or swimming. Parang ganon. You can host. <coughs> excuse me. You can host more than one sport mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. the UAP. But uh, football was mostly what Ateneo. Ateneo. From what I remember, uh, when I used to play, it was UST. Because it was only men, no juniors, no women. 
I, all my games when I was playing in UP, when I was playing for UP, I don't remember playing anywhere else except for UST, in the UST. Field. Yeah, I, 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 I played in UST a, a couple, a, a few times also. Yeah. I mean, in, in, back in college. So. It makes sense, they have so many fields there, yeah. right? Yeah. No, they have only have one field, but they only have one football field. Really? Yeah, the open area is for general. Yeah, it's for uh, military training. Yung mga CMT, yeah, you see them there. So, yeah, concerts, mm -hmm. mga ganun. But, but like I said, once my fields are done in the LSU and Lubang, yeah, you go. Yo. Sorry, folks, you're gonna travel. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> Two hours to go to Lubang. No, all you need is get an e pass. <laughs> you don't have to pass immigration anymore. No, that's the way it's gonna go. It. Look at FU for him as a dulo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you notice, everything's moving out. I don't see because the city is really getting too crowded. No there. space. No space. To like, yeah. so, I mean, I, I see I see tournaments now being held in in New Valley, yes. in Greenfield. You oh, know, yeah. people travel all the way there. Yeah, all the way to Los Banos. Yeah. I mean, it's not. A, it's, like it's certainly not. You know, it's not a problem mm. anymore. Yeah. Especially for 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 parents driving their kids. Oh, anyway. no, no more than that. No, no, it's, well, it's part of it. I remember when I was starting off. You know, we were coaching. I was coaching for this other youth league that's been going on for so long. Going to Ateneo alone was a hassle. Some parents would complain to me. Coach Alayo. Anyway. Hindi pa uso yung mga aircon buses noon. Uh -huh. Mga dukha lahat mga schools na yan. Mga mini bus pa, school bus na screen. Tapos pag, pagdating mo sa daro, puro ano na, alikabukit. Uh -huh. Mga dukit na mas parang alikabukit. Hindi ka pa rin nila. But during those times, and I'm not talking even way, way back. I'm just yeah. talking, even talking about 80s. Right. Mid 80s, di ba? To middle yeah. 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before the school started using the money the right way. Oh, hindi. CSE, hanggang 2000s yan. Ganun na doon pa ako. Rin. Wala pa kami ng ano, aircon eh. Pagdating namin dun, no, katabi namin yung bus. But right now, you know, I, I've been observing, I've been noticing, right? Like, it's UAP teams, they all arrive in buses right now. Right. Aircon. Bus? Yeah. I was like, wow, man. Yeah. Aircon, aircon buses, yeah. Now, okay, get my time. Kanya-kanya, chikot eh, di ba? <laughs> and chikot, me, my first year as a rookie in the UAP for UP, I had to freaking go with a cab. Every Sunday, I take a cab from, from Makati to UST. Taxi! <laughs> Hindi, yeah, kaya pa yung taxi noon eh. Magkano lang yung... Uh, 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 <laughs> or carpooling. Kaya, kaya. Now, you try to do that. Murahin ka pa. <laughs> carpool pa yan, di ba? Carpool, oh, carpool. Oh, kanya-kanya yan, dati yan. Kanya-kanya. Yeah, during, during your time, yeah. Kanya-kanya pa rin yan. Walang... That's why we always risk, let's say, during my time with, with Coach Chris, would walk out. Because someone would come late. <laughs> right, 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 right. Big game, you know. Oh. Eat. <laughs> yeah. I remember my coach one time, see Chris, right? We were in UST, we we're gonna play UST. So we were late, right? So he's getting mad at us. I'm not gonna coach you guys anymore. I'm, I'm gone, that's it. But you see him there. <laughs> he's there watching the game. <laughs> His car is there, lang, watching the game. No? So, couldn't abandon you guys fully. I couldn't. <laughs> the UAP should be. Getting bigger, I mean, yeah. but the only way we can get bigger is the other university UAP members put up football teams. I mean, hmm. I remembered because for the women UAP, I lobbied for that alone for four years. I was the only one who lobbied for women's football. And in the UAP, I don't know if you know this well, but in UAP, you have a one year to four to two years of probation or something before it becomes a regular part of the UAP, meaning kasama yung points for the overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Women's football, one year lang. Yeah. Next year, regular na. They saw that there was... Yeah. Then the juniors... The sport then becomes, you know, yeah. right, right. regular. And then the juniors, Ateneo and Lasal, you know, we, we, we wanted to put juniors football. So why not juniors football if we have too many women already, right? So completo na. Completo na. So, since basketball my juniors, volleyball my juniors, mm -hmm. all the other sports my juniors, why not football then? Right. And, uh, I think uh, UAP football juniors came about uh, about maybe four years after women started, I think. About that, somewhere there. I think the, the UAP juniors was pretty recent then, if you look at it. Not really. Uh, In football? Was like, yeah. Was uh, it like early, early 2000 or? Within the, within the century? I don't remember because the, all I remember is the first UAP juniors coming champion. <laughs> first year lang. 
<laughs> na hindi kasama pa sa points. <laughs> uh, ano, ano tawag doon? Uh, uh, exhibition na ano pa? Yeah, exhibition. Exhibition. exhibition oh, yeah, pa. Exactly. Yan ang gusto idiin ng mga tinista. <laughs> exhibition naman yun eh. Diba? Which, which kind of opens it up eh. Which makes the, you know, the high school football more... Uh, more competitive. Also. More competitive. Yeah. Right? Kasi before you had aspirants and mm. candidates but now you got the the best of the best mm. yeah. so even if you're a freshman you're you're high school play. selection talaga high school selection high school selection talaga who is the winningest team in the UA, in the UAP football um who's got the most titles UST UST because sorry father this <laughs> I have to say the truth excuse <laughs> uh, explanation when i my first year in the UAP i got surprised uh the UAP football rule which one, in all fairness to the UAP board, when I complained, the next year they, they followed what I suggested. But I was a victim of my own, uh, how do you call this? My own recommendations. Uh. UST had won the most because, if I remember right, UAP states the team that uh, sweeps, okay, that sweeps is outright champion. Right, right. But. This was written, I think, 19 Kopong Kopong. They didn't know. In football, there are points. Like I said earlier, win three points, draw one point. Mm -hmm. A sweep should be uh, 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 understood as all wins. wins. Yep. A draw is not a win. Yeah. Okay? That's why UST has a lot of, in the beginning, has a lot of uh, football championships because of that. Adami mga nag draw. But the points are in the middle. So when, then when I recommend, I really violently, strongly <laughs> recommended that this is crazy. I mean, you cannot do that. Not to take anything away from UST of the past, no. But that's it has to be right. So that year, then they started a new rule. I was a victim of my own. Of my, <laughs> I only had one draw, but I had to play a championship. Ah, so I said, fine. I don't care. This is football. This is the way it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the way it's supposed to be. Okay, like if I win or I lose, I don't. You're gonna, you're gonna ask me if I won. I don't remember. <laughs> I think I did. Maybe. But in the '90s, you won. You won it once, right? Once, lang. '94, '95. I don't remember anymore. I don't. It was against USD. Yeah, to me, it's these things are trivial to me. I don't. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. For my players to remember of this, okay, fine, good for them. But for, but for me, no. I mean, I've been coaching too long. I, I'm not like other coaches. Now, I throw in my resume. Oh, can you beat me? But if anybody wants to challenge me, I'll challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I pretty much remember the year you won because that was the year we were last. <laughs> <laughs> the only award you won was the Fair Play Award. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when LaSalle won the Fair Play Award, I liked it, but I got pissed off my players. Why? That's why we lost. Because you're too nice. <laughs> That's why you get a fair play award because you were too nice. Well, look at Ateneo, same thing. <laughs> they were too nice, they won the fair play, but what were they? Last? <laughs> Last. But it's, it's good that it's being, why is it just now though? Like, um, obviously you said in the night, early, in like mid 90s, there was, uh, they would air the finals between La Salle and Ateneo. Mm -hmm. And then it's been a long time, na wala, wala, no college football. So when I saw it, this year, for the first time, I was very excited because mm -hmm. I was a big fan of UAP basketball and the level of basketball that they're able to bring. And now I get to see it in the football sense. So I'm very excited as a football fan. This is awesome. More football is always a yeah. plus, yes. right? Uh, and you get to see these guys and get to know them so that once they move up into the UFL already, so I really enjoyed the idea of it. Uh, how did it come about just this year? Well, I guess um, with the partnership with Studio 23, yeah. um, they realized that I think coming off the success of UAP Volleyball, mm. you know, how right now there's a big following yeah. and maybe that's something they can do. So, you know, right now, when you say a first time, it's really a first time um, for a TV network to cover a regular season, right. regular right. season first games. First time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. First time. So, which is good. So your input of the you know having the ufl or even the ascals you know it's good to see the connection there because mm. eventually all these college players will be standouts yeah. yeah they'll definitely jump into the league yeah this is something that we never had yeah <laughs> you know we never had that that next step mm. you know after college you finish your you finish all your playing years you're done you know just go on and work but again now sunday league now, sunday league, oh, sunday oh. league right? So right now, you know, there's something that for these young players to look forward to. You know, even from the high school, I mean, even the grade school, 
they're all like you know joining all these youth clubs already, mm. you know, especially etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that's the greatest thing. So maybe that's that's one way of actually trying to get the connection, and and of course UAP football being um, <clears throat> one of the more prestigious leagues, right? Who knows? You know, maybe next season the NCAA will follow suit. Yeah, you know, that, that's something that's something that's you know. Following this 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 topic that we're talking about now, uh, there are tweeted questions uh, regarding our young players. If there's the UFO, if there's a UAP rule, which I know for a fact is not yet, okay, uh, regarding UFL players uh, in the UAP teams, mm -hmm. because there's uh, like uh, there are quite a few number of players, right? Uh, not just uh, Amani, not just Amani, Agidaldo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. who was formerly FU, is now in UP, which I think he'll only end up playing in two years or three years' time, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, He's serving out a residency or something like that, right? Yeah, because the UAP rule is if you are transferred from another UAP member, you have to sit out two years. Two years. Right. That's right. A, for the folks not to, to get confused. That's a different ruling on high school graduate. Let's say high school graduate of La Salle going to Ateneo uh, for college. Mm -hmm. That's a different rule altogether. But just for the record, I have two that went to Ateneo. But because we're so nice people in La Salle, Brother Ricky Laguda doesn't believe in that rule. That's why anybody <laughs> who comes from La Salle so bad, who goes to Ateneo, UST, UP, FEU, NU, doesn't matter, automatic, they're released. Because we don't believe in holding back okay, so young talent. You, you will then be able to play right away? If, gonna... if. You're released. If you're released. But this is another crazy rule. I'm sorry, UAP board, but I find it really stupid. Uh, if you are a graduate from, let's say, for example, uh, like I said, from the Salso Bell, that went to, that chose went to Ateneo, mm. you know, for whatever reason, I don't really care, course or whatever. Yeah. Okay. If you are not released by La Salle, you have to sit out two years, yeah. right? I think you're alarming, by the way. Uh, if, if, <laughs> Nice watch. Uh, if uh, if you are released, then you play right away. Okay, what happened to the year in between? Maybe you can change the rule, UAP. Maybe you can change the rules. If you're not released, one year residency. Because if you're released, you can play right away. So if it's, or else, if you have no, you're not released, you have two years residency, right? Mm -hmm. If you're released, then you have one year residency, pa. Take it or leave it. Which one would you choose? Of course, everybody else would love to do the one-year residency, if not released. Released. Play. Because I find it crazy. Where did you come off with two years residency? Mm -hmm. A number of years over from, from high school to a different college UAP member, right? But you're released, you play right away. So two, you just take out one, there's still one more year, but you jump that. So do something with that. You see, for them, Personally, on a personal note, uh, I really don't believe in that rule also. Why do you have to stop the kid from playing? It's his choice. Remember, we don't own anyone except ourselves. <laughs> philosophy. Uh, philosophy. You know, let the kid choose the man. Whether it, he's, the kid's being paid or not, or bet, whatever. Let, these are kids. Come on, this talent. Okay? Uh, I don't know if, if you know this rule really about that. If, but if, from what I know, there's no rule yet with regards to a UFL playing first for the UFL before playing for the UAP. Right, so that's the there's case. No it's the other university, college, collegiate league. NCAA. That you can't even play anyway. Well, what is your take on that? Which one? Would you allow a UAP player to play in the UFL? Yes. Number one, I'm just looking at the fact that these kids, look, a lot of the UAP, and nobody can deny this, we have a lot of players that come from the provinces. We recruit these kids, boys, men, women. We recruit them, even in the high school, okay, already, to give them their good in their sport, right? Mm -hmm. They're good in the sport. This is their stepping stone. This is their ticket out of poverty. So they come in here, we give them good education. By hook or by crook, we want them to graduate. We give them extra tutors and all that. Not just we just let it pass, okay. Now we there, there's a, a venue where in this recruits have can be their, their their allowances can be augmented by a league or by a club or another team 
why do you stop that? Why will we stop them from 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 playing for another team? Why are, why are we so parang tayo lang ba? Tayo lang ba nandito? Huh? Tayo lang ba? Don't you think don't you see the 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 the, the repercussions about this? Kawaw yung bata. E kung mag-residency, I know for a fact there's a rule. Because Mark Molina of FEU, the athletic of FEU, I called him this morning to clear out for one of my players that could play in the UFL First Division. Okay? Uh, because he's in the residency. But Mark uh, just explained to me that there's a generic UAP ruling where if you're on a residency, you cannot play for another team, regardless of what team. You cannot play for another team. Wow. But you can play for that school where you are enrolled at in any other tournament. Basta for that school that you're in, uh -oh. but not for any other team. Now, this thing about the UAP player UFL, I think I brought it up in the first meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, what FES told me that there's no such rule yet. But I know for the other collegiate league, there is a rule that you, for the whole year you cannot play anywhere except for that school. Why are we so swapang naman? Hindi naman tayo naglalaro, hindi naman tayo nagihirap. And what change will that do? If these kids are getting allowances out of, of this, it helps them. So, why, wait, uh, are all the universities giving their, their players enough? I don't think so. Kulang kulang lahat yan. I'm, talking about, I'm not only talking about Lasal, I'm talking about everyone. Kasi kung, kung may mga players na sa UAP na gusto maglaro sa UFL para kumita lang sa malaki, that is because they're not getting enough. Okay? There's, it's not like saying that they're not going to continue their school. Bahala na yung coach doon. Iba yung coach na mag-ahawak, mag-control. Yung coach na mag-nurture na rin batang yun sa, from the provinces. I don't believe, I don't believe that there should be a rule stopping. Uh, I think the other collegiate is you need to play with the, in, that, in their league for one year before you can play in the EFL. Why do you add? Because I remember the UAP rule is, and the other league is, uh, the other collegiate uh, league uh, is, you cannot play when the season is on. Right. Yun lang yung rules. Yes. Uh -oh. Eh, hindi naman talaga maglalaro yung mga yan eh. I remember before, there were so many games of UP that was forfeited because of IE. two or three players were playing mm. uh, in the UFL second mm. division. Yeah. Yes. During the UAP. That is, that is their mistake. That was their mistake. That was UP's mistake. Not UFL, not UAP. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that's the standing rule. I believe in that. Mm -hmm. But if it's the UAP, UAP lang. No lesser player will play anywhere else. Unless I release, or I, I kick out, or I don't take. So, okay, you can play in other teams. But if you're not in my, in my let's say, the 20 for the UAP, then you stay with that. UAP is such a short tournament anyway. I'm not, I'm not belittling, I'm not belittling UAP. I'm saying, UAP is a short, uh, that's about two months. Two months and a half at the most. Yeah, two months and a half. Okay? Hmm. Well, the UFL is year-round. And it's already, uh, you know, I've waited for this for decades, for the Filipino to make a living out of football. And here we are, a collegiate body, athletic body, trying to hold them back from earning extra. Why? Give me one good reason why. I, I cannot understand. And this is, you're, you're, you're talking in terms of uh, not just the scholars. I mean, anybody. You know, the players on football scholarships. Yes. If I, if I were to look at it uh, on my own perspective, I think it's an investment of the school. Right. Scholarship, investment in the school. Mm. You know, that the boys got talent. Mm. Right? And there have been some cases, you know, in playing, that, 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 that kid playing in other leagues suddenly tears his ACL. Mm. You know, Leon. He cannot now play, let's say. A good example here in basketball a few years back um, was a, uh, are, are you, do you know Magnum Embrera? Yeah. Yes. Okay. UP. Left hand. Left hand. Ateneo. UC Proteneo, yes. right? Mm. And uh, for the time he was playing for Happy mm. Toothpaste in the BBL. And I think he tore his ACL in yes. the game. And he wasn't able to play in that, the next UAP season. So I think looking at that perspective, you know, it's an investment. You know, you're getting this talent. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of support right. going on. But really, I'll cut you off there. But even if, if Magdum stayed in Ateneo, 
or in UP, wherever time when he got his injury. Don't you think that can happen also? Like if I was playing for Atene, uh, for La Salle, okay? I was playing for La Salle. Then I'll be playing for the Green Archers United in the UFL. Mm -hmm. I get injured in UFL. Don't you think I can get also injured in La Salle? Same shit, man. Even in training, I get ACLs. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I, won't, I won't forget those things because before a championship, I, I lost my keeper to ACL. But nobody knows. She played. And we, we still won that with an ACL. Dr. George Canlas was so pissed off with me because saying, you cannot play. Tell Coach Chad you cannot play. I said, no. She wanted to play. So I just taped her up she yeah. like a robot, but we still won. Right. That can happen anywhere, anytime. I, I get your point. I get your point. Yeah. I also see the point of, of the university that, 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 that suggested this new ruling. Yeah. My, the bottom line is, just like the, like the case of, of the UFL players, like Rufo and all this. Yeah. My take on that is, let the kids play. That's all. Let them make the choice. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see any reason why. The only thing I'm afraid, or I'm thinking of is, because I've had players who went to Ateneo, then when he was there in Ateneo, he's the one who freaking scored against me. Right. Against my team, the UAP. Mm. You think I got pissed off or what? No. In, 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 a, in, 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 in another perspective, I was even proud eh, that a rookie from La Salle playing for Ateneo was given the chance to, 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 to take that shot mm -hmm. by the free kick, mm -hmm. which he scored. His dad was my teammate, okay, in high school and elementary. And we just uh, jokes, you know, pulling each other's legs. But, pero, basta, me bottom line is, if you give me another, if you give me another reason, a very more valid reason why we're gonna hold back kids from playing or earning extra during their collegiate years. Because our topic is, uh, the question is, is there a rule banning UFL players from playing the UAP? So as, as of the moment, let's just make it clear, as of the moment, there isn't. None. There is no rule. There isn't. But not in the UAP. Right, not in the UAP. Um, it, it's already implemented in NCAA. Right? I don't know. Right. I don't know, but I heard it. it I, I, I get it though. Like, you know, like you said, Coach Hans is more of, you know, let the kids develop as far as they can, right? Obviously, on the other side, schools don't want to be taken advantage of. You, yes. were, you spent the money Investment to, to, pluck me, yes. to pluck me from, you know, using your scouting, to pluck me from whatever province mm -hmm. I'm from. We housed you, we had you over and, and fed you and all of that, and then you go and play in the UFL and, and, and injure yourself. Mm -hmm. So that would be, a, you know, a kick in the teeth for the school. So obviously, there's a bit of a, a dance that has to be made between the player and, and I, I, the I believe that this is something that could be taken up at the end of the yes. season. Right. This, this, this this has, I mean, this whole issue has to be cleared right, yeah, right. once and for all. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, but uh, my other thing I forgot to say, you know, guys, is the one that benefits from this, besides obviously the athlete, the player himself or herself, is the school and the teams, the school team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get it? Because like me, what I wanted to, like I said, my player, he's going to have one year playing the first division. He's young. He's yeah. only 17 years old. A strong player. Melissa? No, 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 no. Uh, for the Sal. Oh. John Jets for FU. Oh, but right, sorry. Mm -hmm. Correct. But, you know, this player is a keeper. And you'll appreciate this really when you see him. I'm telling you. When I told you, I pointed to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's 17 years old. He's tall. He's, gonna get, he's gonna, still going to grow. And I've seen his, 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 his skills. Okay? He's going to be a top notch keeper in the future. He actually is supposed to be the, he's the first choice keeper for the teen Ascals under 19. What they won in Australia, he was there. But during when they went to Indonesia, wrong time because he's schooling na. Kaya maraming hindi nakapunta to join that national team. That's another, for another show. Yeah. Uh, the program for the youth. Mm -hmm. But like I'm saying, I want him to earn. Because there are two top teams who asked me if I can give a keep, if I have a keeper. So I said, wait, perfect, this, this kid is doing nothing. Mm -hmm. He's just training, 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 training. That's why when he asks uh, excuse to miss training because he has class or exam or quiz or whatever, I don't get pissed off. I say, go ahead. Because, wala pa eh, next pa eh. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for me, my take on that is, like, like I've always said this and I've been following this principle. In school, 
Uh, some people don't believe me because they make their own conclusion with me. That's why I get so fucking pissed off when these people just talk like this. Like I hold my players down as well. Screw you, you don't know anything. Uh, the more games, the more games a kid plays. I, when I say kid, I still mean collegiate. Right. Mm -hmm. Up to collegiate, kid. The more a kid plays, the better. One, better for that player, obviously. Two, better for his home team, meaning the school. Yeah, he's better, he's stronger, he's yeah. got more experience. But if the attitude is different, he becomes big-headed or whatever, then you gotta tell him off, you gotta mm -hmm. put him, you gotta put his feet back on, on the ground. ground. Mm -hmm. Let him plant his feet back on the ground. That's you, that's why you're the coach there. Okay, you gotta need to do that. So, there is, for me, it's not, there's no lose-lose situation, it's a win-win situation, mm -hmm. uh, letting other players play. That's why I was saying, if you give me investment, I mean, uh, I'm not hitting on anyone, huh? But in La Salle, the La Salle administration, the La Salle brothers, like I said earlier, we don't believe that rule about the high school player jumping. Yeah. Automatic release. From Galen La Salle, released regardless of what school or what university he or she has decided to go and play for. Okay? The thing is, uh, in football, they allow me to make the decision. And my decision is very easy, light-hearted, you don't even have to think about it anymore. Because all I'm thinking of is for the future of the kid. Right. Future in terms of everything. Education. Education. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number one is education. Because my, 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 my first priority when I recruit for players or when some other coaches or parents or whatever for that matter uh, throw me a player, you know, throw to me a player for, to recruit for the next year. I only ask one question, number one. First, I have two questions, but sorry. The first question is, takot ba sa ball pen? <laughs> takot sa ball pen? Wag na. Wag na, kasi he'll never or she'll never make it. Uh -huh. Number two, if I don't know the kid, who does he or she play like during your time, your coach? Because most of the coaches used to be players also anyway before. Hmm. So I said, panahon mo, para kanino? Then I have an idea na. Things like that, hmm. okay? Hmm. When they come in, when they're here in Manila na, instead of doing nothing, hindi ba? Parang ano rin yan eh, when you're a parent, when you see a kid, your son or your daughter at home, doing nothing except for Facebook, 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 what would you do? Take him or her out, send her or out, you know, do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing like this. You have a recruit. Okay? Colorin mo. Kung maganda, kung magaling yung bata, pwede mo pipigilan. Eh, like Amani, where do you see a local boy that big and talented? Mm -hmm. He's been playing first division. Ilan, ilan lang players dito Pinoy talaga. Mm. You are an exception. You're a retarded Filipino because you're six footer <laughs> people. <laughs> Filipinos, you don't see that. Yeah. Retarded, wrong word. Wrong word. <laughs> Special. Sorry, sorry. Gifted. Abnormal. Special gifted. Abnormal. Yeah, yeah. abnormal. <laughs> For a Filipino, no. I'm yeah. not kidding. Side. No, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. A man is a six two kid who can play strike mid back. Oh. Sino ba nanalo dyan? Hmm. Sa experience nyo with the Ascals, with the teen Ascals, Ascals. With Global. Good. So he, he really becomes an asset. Yeah, he becomes of an asset. Yeah. But, he'll be, uh... Feeling ko kasi, ano to eh, parang childish, ano eh. Oh, iniwan mo ko, ha? Oh, ito na naman, ha? Wala akong titira, kaibigan ko lahat. <laughs> I'm a friendly guy. Pero pag tinamahan kayo, hindi <laughs> kayo. What I'm saying is, it's like kids na, Oi, I got your phone. No, that's my phone. I got it. No, I mean, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Ganun lang eh. Let the kids decide for themselves. Hindi naman tanga yan eh, kahit galing probinsya. Hindi naman tanga yung mga bata eh. Hmm. Siyempre, there will always be wrong advices. Minsan from the parents. Or maybe not minsan, most of the time from the parents. Giving them, their kids, wrong advices, wrong suggestions. Also, it could be somebody else. Especially in basketball. Now in football, you know why? Right? Agents are coming in. Exactly. That's why you as a coach like me, for example, I'm a coach of LaSalle. If you're from LaSalle, I will be your agent. Not saying that I'll get 5% from you, from what you earn. No, because I have. I have players. I'm not even getting a single centavo. Mm -hmm. As long as they play for Green Archers. <laughs> okay? As long mm -hmm. as they play for LaSalle team, the Green Archers. If they play outside there, then I'll, I'll work on their contracts. And I'll mm -hmm. get my share. Mm -hmm. So if anybody from the sal now goes out, I take care. 
I, I look at the contract, whatever decision, you talk to me. The other teams who come, management, you talk to me. Because this kid doesn't know any better. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of players in the UFL who don't know any better. <laughs> to tell you frankly, they don't know any better. May mga players dyan nga, 10,000 lang ang sweldo dati for this first club when he started. Abaw. Gustong lumipat sa ibang team, putang na, 50,000 ang gusto, 65,000 na. Yung job, ganun. Parang one year ka lang probationer sa trabaho sa office. <laughs> Boss, wala ba akong increase? O magkano increase gusto mo? 100%. 300%. Yeah, man. Huwag naman ganyan. Alright, we're gonna wrap this show up. Um, just right away! If we do, it's, it's an hour and a half. It flies by all the time. Uh, for all the people who don't know about Amani Aguinaldo, he's currently under residency and yes. he's being uh, disallowed from playing with Global. Although he already has played for Global, that's the problem. But he's a top notch he is, player. He's allowed? Are you sure? Yeah. Um, he's being disallowed. Um, By who? At least in the PFF Smart National Club Championship at the time. That's because another. Of Anyways, um, t there's, a, there's that saying in football if you're good enough, you're old enough. And Amani Aguinaldo is certainly good enough to play. So that's you know up to you guys about you know which side of the debate you guys are going to fall into. And obviously there's been a bit of a discussion about you know the rules of whether you should be allowed to play in the pros and, and while at the same time playing for your for your college team, mm -hmm. right? So uh, really, thanks a lot for coming by. You know, an hour and a half is really not enough to talk about yeah. everything. So hopefully you'll you, come back on the show soon. And good luck on all your endeavors as UAP commissioner. It's your first year, but you guys are doing an amazing job. So. Um, Awesome stuff and congratulations. We're headed in the right direction. But before the end of the year, or before the end of the season, really, as young as he is, we'll start having white hair. <laughs> I promise you. And uh, Coach Hans, obviously, you know, good luck on the UAP season. Yeah. Um, already got two wins in the bag after a slow start, so hopefully that continues. All the South people are behind you. Um, enough, um, all the monoblock chairs, we're warning you. <laughs> Not too close in the vicinity, all right? Yeah, I will make sure we remove that. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, before we turn off, in all fairness, uh, kudos to Mark Molina and to Anton Montola, because they did right away what I suggested to do on the field, on the turf. They spent, they spent money on to do stuff. They did their best to do what they, what I saw was fitting for the UAP football season now to for it, for for purpose of safety and yes. all that they did it. And thank you for also for doing that. Thanks for watching the show. As usual, download the podcast app on your iPod and of course click subscribe on hands on. I catch it on HD as well if you want to see all the glory and beauty of these men that do this show. Alright, so uh, thanks again to Saras LaSalle Football Club. Appreciate all the support you guys have been throwing our way. We'll catch you guys again next week for more hands-on. And you'll know your guest next week when we know. <laughs> okay. See ya.